Excellent. Well done, guys. Keep up the great work. Right. So now what we're going to look at is we're going to try and get an understanding around why your customers should care. The, this is the challenge we have is we go to customers and the undesirable state is, is kind of acceptable. It's, it's not perfect. The product or service they're using is doing the job adequately. You have come in and you have shown or maybe made some claims that your transformation, that you can take them from this sort of desirable, so it's undesirable, but it's not that they can live with it, to a more desirable place, there's transformation going on. So where the challenge comes in is what we refer to as loss aversion. So loss aversion says things are kind of working, your claims are, they, they, they seem feasible, but I don't know if it's worth the risk. That's where, to combat loss aversion, you must demonstrate how the big change you cited previously will create both big winners and big losers. So, think along those, along those sort of terms. So, this is not we using scare tactics to say, uh, if you stay with that, you're gonna, it's going to be really bad, and if you change to this, it's going to be really good. You need to bring across your message in a way that the customer can understand, they can see that the benefits that will accrue to them are massive. So, firstly, you need imperative evidence. So, you have to have imperative evidence to show that by adapting to the change, your customers will enjoy a highly positive outcome. So, like I said, when, if your customer is in a position, let's say it's, it's something like their plant isn't running, their loss aversion is pretty low because the risk of not getting the plant up and running is massive loss production. But let's say the plant's running and um, it's in a dust environment or it's in a high vibration environment or something like that. And you go in and you say, look, that device breaks down every six months. When you change to our device, you put in an oil cooler or um, you optimize, you, you put in one of these devices that will last longer, the repair, or should I rather say the breakdown period, or the period that the plant will be up and running, will be a lot higher. So, they're in a position, the plant's running at the moment, and you've come into them and you, you're saying to them that you can make it better, but at the moment the plant's running. So, their loss of version, in other words, their, the risk of changing is higher. So, what you need to do is you need to have imperative evidence. Because imagine, let's say for example, you come in and, and the, 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 the current gearbox that they're using lasts six months between repairs, and you come in, you see this is the risk part, you come in and you, you make all these amazing claims that last for two years, but it only lasts for three months, you see, so there is some kind of risk, so you need imperative evidence, that's where a recorded testimonial, a case study, and even a really friendly customer, you know, a customer that, that, that you have an amazing relationship with, where you could actually get them to call, and they could actually speak to someone directly who's got direct experience, so you need imperative evidence. Secondly, on the other hand, by adapting to the change, you will have a positive outcome. Or should I rather say, by maintaining where you are, you know, your, your plant will run for six months, but every six months you're going to have downtime. Whereas, if you do change to us, you are not going to have that downtime. Imagine if, if you can, if, let's say for example, this new uh, option that we offer will run for two years between maintenance schedules. Every six months, imagine the time, imagine the benefits. You see, and those benefits, this is what you've got to really uh, think about is, every time that gearbox goes down every six months, let's say it's down for a day or two days, how much production, what is the loss, how much money would you lose because the production line is down? Those are the kind of financial conversations we need to learn to start having with our customers so that we can show them that the initial purchase price might be higher but the benefits in the long run are so massive that it's worth the effort. So what we need to do is we need to show them what's going on. So I want to just give you an example of the big changes, right? So there's, a, there's big changes going on in the marketplace. So one of the big changes is 52% of Fortune 500 companies have closed their doors during just the past 15 years. And if we go back 50 years, 
Those same Fortune 500 companies, 75 years was their lifespan. So there's been a massive change. What is the reason for that change? Well, as you know, technology is changing at a massive pace. I mean, if we go back, think about somebody who used to make buggies for stagecoaches, right? They made those for years and years and years, and then they developed the automobile. So there was a, a phasing out. But with technology developing now, I mean, if you go back to 2006, which is not that long ago, they say that 60 to 70% of the jobs that exist today never existed in 2006. So imagine how fast the pace of change. And that's why <laughs> when you're talking to CEOs, you've got to be on top of your game. You've got to be the bringer. You've got to be the person who has conducted that regular monthly SWOT analysis, who is completely aware of all the changes. What is going on at international level, national level, in your industry, markets? What possible changes could be affecting your customers' businesses? And how can you bring that to their attention? And most importantly, how can your products or, service or services help them to transform, positively transform their business from what could be a sort of desirable state to a much more desirable state?